Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to go over my October forecast so we can detail things out the best we can so you can know what to expect and plan ahead. Welcome back everyone. How's it going? I appreciate all my followers out there and my new followers, which is about 6,000 of you in the month of September. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns on North America and the tropics, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to the overall 500 millibar for the first week of October. So what we're taking a look at here is just overall kind of troughs and ridges, kind of give you where, you know, more of the unsettled weather pattern is and more of the, uh, the kind of the drier setups are. So here you see a building ridge across Alaska that keeps them warm as well as a good chunk of the the northwest and portions of british columbia where we got a ridge pretty much building over the top but we've got significant signs of troughing building across the east and the northeast that'll keep them cool if not cold for several days to come so there's a lot of cooler air going to be filtering in of course across the east east coast and in the northeast so you can take a look at the overall temperature anomalies underneath it yeah, these are above, if not well above average temperatures in much of Alaska, much of British Columbia off the west coast here. While we do have some instability underneath, most of this across the middle of the country, you have a lot of cooler nights and, you know, warmer days. But overall, for the next week, for your first week of October, it's going to be pretty unsettled across the east with the remnants of Ian. And then these troughs come down. It's going to have some chilly mornings, no question about it. But underneath it, you can now we see this blue here. That's an indication where there's definitely going to keep alive the monsoonal flow and some of the remnants of Hurricane Orlean down there in the eastern Pacific. So let's take a look at that. Man, this is actually a major hurricane right now in the eastern Pacific. But this one's actually making a beeline northbound. And that's going to bring those uh, unsettled weather and why you see those cooler temperature anomalies for portions of New Mexico and that'll spread into the desert southwest while well, we have another system on its heels so it's definitely staying alive and active in the eastern Pacific on the hurricane front but out in the Atlantic we've got two systems over the next week to really highlight and talk about right here is this area of concern about a 70 percent chance of developing most models have actually have this developing into tropical storm Julia but what's more concerning for the United States and most of the Western Caribbean is this newly developed uh, you know, circle right here of area to watch for the National Hurricane Center over the next five days. You can definitely see this continues westbound. So nothing to be concerned about like in the immediate future, but next week we'll highlight this is definitely a little bit more concerning, especially for the Western Caribbean. So if we take a look at the overall seven day uh, precipitation anomalies, you can definitely see in the Leeward Islands, we got well above average precipitation continuing for them. This actually spreads into uh, Jamaica. So there's definitely signs of uh, a lot of upward rising motion air in this area for the next seven days. And that's why they've got that, you know, 20% chance of tropical development over the next seven days in the Caribbean. But for the rest of the country, what sticks out as like a sore thumb is this man just high and dry for the next seven days for a good chunk of Texas and much of the Southeast. Luckily, uh, Florida starts to dry out in a big way and they desperately need it off and after all the devastation they went through with Ian. But you can definitely see here what's actually going to be looked at for the next next couple of days is just kind of a, a hybrid low that's left over with from from Ian and up up into the into the northeast there. So we've got a lot of action. We could be looking at some coastal high winds across the eastern seaboard places like, you know, New Jersey, back in New York, back in uh, uh, Delaware areas. Those areas could pick up some fairly significant rainfall totals. And this is just kind of the remnant low from what will what is left over from Ian over the next couple of days. So when I expect, especially if you live along the coast there, Definitely expecting some uh, higher wind gusts for the next couple of days as, as Ian will try to wind itself down. But there's what's going to be left over after what Orlean going to be impacting portions of uh, Mexico here. But that'll help spread some of the moisture back into portions of New Mexico, back into the desert southwest along the Four Quarters region. 
and this will be combined with an upper level low across portions of the upper midwest will have some unsettled conditions but mainly where the ridge is in place out west out here and portions of british columbia and western canada it's high and dry underneath that ridge of high pressure but underneath that we do have some elevated snow we're going to be dealing with for the next week most of this is going to be above 9,000 feet in elevation but some of those areas if you live in the higher elevations and portions of montana back into wyoming especially in, in the mountains of colorado and portions of new mexico could see some snow flying if you live happen to live above about 9,000 feet uh, but most of the snow is well to the north up in Canada uh, for the next week time frame. But once we get into week two, things get a little bit more interesting. We're still going to have the ridge over portions of the west and the Pacific Northwest. So I do feel the higher temperature anomalies continuing to remain in place. But what's concerning is this ridge over, over Canada. That's always concerning, especially with the tropical look in October the ridge over troubled water so that's definitely concerning about as we get into week two what may be to come what could be carl by then but we actually have more troughs going to be coming in two portions of the northeast where that continued unsettled conditions and much cooler conditions are going to be remain in effect really for the foreseeable future so i see for the first two weeks of october much of the east and northeast are going to be below average uh, temperature anomalies so you can see this and as we kind of zoom in to some of these temperature anomaly averages for this week two time frame say around the 10th through the 17th time frame there is we have again the ridge of high pressure is going to be pretty much locked over the west coast and much of Canada with that ridge over troubled waters the middle of the country just like you see this week you'll see it next week but we are seeing more signs of some cooler conditions might filter not just in the higher elevations but a fairly significant uh, upper level low and this trough going to be coming through around the 13th after the 13th time frame which could signal a pattern change but overall for much of the east coast and much of the much of the northeast you're going to be seeing those below average temperature anomalies for your second week of October. So here's the verticity I'm talking about. This kind of shows up around the 13th of the month. It looks like to be a slower mover, but this could be a game changer and a pattern change for, hey, snow lovers. That snow that was hinting at higher elevations could be a little bit lower with this colder air loft system that's going to be sneaking through off the northwest flow so but what that is going to bring to the table is probably a significant change for the middle of the country where they they're going to be remaining high and dry this could actually alter and change the weather pattern and hey bring some rain back into portions of texas the middle of the country into kansas and oklahoma and some of those heavier rains could spread off into portions of the ohio valley so by this won't be until you know i would say after around the 13th 14th about the middle of the month we do see a fairly significant trough that's going to be diving in off the northwest flow that could be the game changer and kind of a slower mover so welcome rains may extend back into texas where you've been high and dry for the last month so i still think you're going to remain high and dry for like the next 10 days but we're seeing subtle signs of hints of this uh this upper level low that be, could you could be coming across and a little bit lower slower mover that will add and then help increasing to these rain amounts in the midsection of the country where you have been dry so i do see some signs of a pattern change but this might not be until towards the middle of the month but underneath that there's your snow for your snow lovers so we could be looking at some fairly if not the most significant snowstorm of the season by the time we get into your middle of the month time frame with that upper level low that's going to be driving off the northwest flow so portions of montana back into wyoming most of this is going to be higher elevated snow but some of these could be sneaking a little bit lower now as that as that snow le snow level starts to creep further further lower into some of those lower elevations but yeah this could be your little bit more significant snowstorm of the season while much of eastern canada starts to see snow as well so but what's uh concerning as we take a look at the overall jma this is your japanese model 
what we're looking at here is the blue as that signifies upward rising motion air so whenever you see that that adds you know basically has the lift that's associated with thunderstorm development and this would be over the Caribbean where we have that signal for Carl what well, maybe to come to Carl by the middle of the month so this is definitely concerning that we have a lot of blue like you know kind of a lot of upward rising motion air in the Japanese model and the same thing that's hinting on the overall European guidance as well portions of the Western Caribbean hinting at the Gulf of Mexico as maybe that trough may be coming across by then towards the middle of the month 15th 16th 17th of the month we could be looking at some higher rain tall totals coming across portions of Texas moving across portions of the Ohio Valley by then but underneath that this is what's concerning more and more members more more ensemble members are kind of hinting at with the combination of that upward rising motion air the ridge over the top in Canada the ridge of troubled waters we could be looking at what what's hinting at Carl right now might be coming to fruition by then after we get past the the 10th or the month or the 12th towards the middle of the month we see more and more ensemble members trying to hint at uh, maybe a maybe another tropical type system out here into the western caribbean by the time we get to the middle of the month time frame but after that as we get towards you know the 20th say october 20th time frame we have to look at uh, the, the 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 cfs this is your uh climate forecasting system and this is you know this this one's used for kind of a longer range signals for pattern recognition so it actually does fairly decent so what I, what we're looking at is some signs of change in the overall pattern so by the time of the 20th of the month we do feel like a significant trough that's going to be diving in into the pacific northwest so i feel like you're going to be remaining above average for at least the first half of october but by the time we get towards the 20th time frame, we do have a fairly significant trough that's going to be diving into the Pacific Northwest, bringing more unsettled conditions to British Columbia by then, to portions of Washington and Oregon and Northern California. And then we have another trough that could be signaling diving back in towards the 25th of the month. So we do feel like possibly the atmospheric river might be coming back into play and sticking around a while so it's been really dry for the last whatever months and much of the pacific northwest but it does signal in the longer term after the 20th with successive troughs are going to be coming in we feel like the longer range atmospheric river of your you know your, your, your overall range that you typically see as you get towards october and november time frame should be coming back for you guys into the pacific northwest after the 20th time frame but after that as we get towards the the last last week of october towards the end of the month yeah, this is our first signs for portions of the northeast with this more troughing out west a ridge possibly building back over the middle of the country and another trough to going to be diving into the into the northeast at that time i know this is a long ways off we could be looking at potentially potentially our first snow of the season towards your halloween time frame and up in the portions of the northeast so if we take a look under the hood and see what's happening here as far as the precipitation after we get after about the 20th time frame there's your atmospheric river that does signify tries to come back for much of the pacific northwest with those above average rains and i think that just continues and extends at least for them but with that other trough towards the last week of october could signify above average rains towards the you know towards off the eastern eastern coast and we'll just have to remain to see if it's going to be cold enough at least to start snowing in some of these higher higher elevations in the northeast so if we take a look at the longer range data and kind of look at towards your halloween time frame we are seeing subtle signs of hints we got the northwest flow into the higher elevations off off the pacific northwest but we are seeing or at least our first signs of at least some start to snowflakes may be falling from the sky by then but towards your halloween time frame especially in the higher elevations so un but underneath that here's your overall precipitation anomalies for the next 30 days so by the time we get after the 20th of the month i do feel 
the atmospheric river, the more La Nina type setup pattern starts to come back for your above average rain start to come back for much of the Pacific Northwest and much of Northern California. And those heavier precipitation anomalies will extend with the combination of the monsoon trying to remain alive with these Eastern Pacific storms. I think overall, we do get some rains in the middle of the month, but overall, this will end up being below average precipitation with the La Nina alive in effect. But off the East Coast, what's concerning is there's your Western Caribbean above average precipitation, but Florida and much of the East Coast does hint at above average precipitation, which always keeps uh, the, the, the tropics alive and well uh, as we get deeper into the month. So. Here's your overall precipitation anomalies for the for the, for the the entire month of October. So we do have these signals coming in with these average to below average you know precipitation with these troughs coming in off the northwest flow much of the midsection of the country. I do feel overall for the next 30 days are going to be remaining basically above average and much of the east and eastern two thirds of the United States is either going to be average or to below average uh, temperature anomalies for the next 30 days. And there's your overall uh, precipitation above average anomalies for the Caribbean, which is definitely concerning, hinting at, uh, you know, a lot of upward rising motion air in the Western Caribbean, and then potentially maybe riding up the Eastern seaboard. And if we take a look at the overall uh, climate, you know, climatologically this time of year for October, this is typically what's most, most concerning where we'd be seeing some sort of tropical development by then into the Western Caribbean that would put Florida, unfortunately, back into play and portions of the East Coast. So I don't feel we are done with hurricane season just yet. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update while I protect you before and after the storm.